Uh, welcome to the uh, 2002 CT WEA Fall Workshop. I'm Tom Scroy, I'm the Engineering Director for Greater New Haven Water Pollution Control Authority and the President of this organization. Um, this uh, workshop offers the same format of the workshops presented under the old CAWPCA. You'll notice that C, uh, CT WEA Board will continue to maintain similar events from both the former organizations along with new events to meet the membership's needs. Uh, you're eligible for 2.7 TCH credits for this event, so uh, confirm that attendance uh, when you sign out as you leave today. Um, this is, you know, we got the, the workshop here. Um, I'm going to give a little introduction, talk about the committees we have now at, uh, with CT WIA. Um, a legislative update given by our legislative council, Melissa Biggs. I haven't seen Melissa yet. Is she here? Oh, she's here. That's good. Um, DEP update split into two parts. We have two presenters, Nisha Patel and Susan Unger. Are you, are you both here? Awesome. I didn't see you either. So many people, I didn't get the chance to talk to anybody. Um, we'll have a brief coffee break. Um, and then uh, a presentation by Matt, uh, Matthew Pollack um, on subsurface disposal and a uh, bio, biox systems presentation by uh, Dick Pope and then some closing announcements. So we'll get you out of here by noon. Uh, I'd like to thank the workshop committee, Bridget Bulkley, Larry Murphy, Ben Levin, and Norb Church. Uh, again, they're in the small communities uh, and collection systems committee. And then special thanks to Bridget Bulkley again, Janice Moran, Mary Berry, and the Nuia staff at, at uh, the staff at Nuia for helping us put the details of this of, of this together. I mean, it's uh, it's a lot of work to put these these functions on. Um, as always, thank you to the sponsors. We have like 27 signature sponsors that continue to support the new organization. Um, I'm not going to read them all, but please pick up the agenda and, and appreciate them all and uh, do business with them. They're all here. Um, uh, so thank you very much, uh, sponsors. Good morning. Good morning. Personally, this year um, has had a lot of challenges for me. Um, these challenges often make you appreciate the things around you and the people you inter interact with on a daily basis. We're blessed to work with such fantastic people that make up our industry, not only in Connecticut and New England, but throughout the country. Visiting WEFTEC in New Orleans this year for the first time in three years reminded me of what a great industry we have. We're, sur we're surrounded by the most talented, compassionate, and grounded people you'll find in any business. WEF's message this year was, tell your water story. The opening session at WEF Tech urged, urged us all to tell, us, tell our story. Individually, we all have great stories to tell, whether they surround challenges, failures, or successes. Together, we need all of you to share your talents and utilize CT WEA as an avenue to tell your story to those who may not understand or appreciate the business of clean water. There's one person here with us today that can tell more stories than likely anyone in the room. And that's superintendent of wastewater treatment in the town of Glastonbury, Mike Bezai. Mike, where are you? Please stand up for a second. How many people in the room by show of hands are younger than 49? It's not me. There's a few. How many? How many were? If you are, Mike Bezai has been working for the town of Glasson since, since before you were born. Sorry about that, Mike. Um, but now that you're retiring, you can spend your time writing a book on the 49 years of your water story. You going to do that? I'll start tomorrow. <laughs> right, there you go. Thinking about Mike is a perfect segue to appreciate of what we have, what we have here at CT, in the CT WEA community. It's a real family. Um, you know, I was touched by some of the things that I had to go through this past year, and the people at GNHWPCA, NUIA, and even beyond that, uh, reached out through LinkedIn and all that. I, I could, it couldn't be more heartwarming. Uh, really great people. 
uh, I, I can't appreciate you guys any more than I do. Uh, most of you know Mike from, um, from CWPAA or CTWIA, and if you don't know Mike, you can just ask anyone in this room. You will quickly find out that he's liked by all, and he's a great human being. He's a true professional, always willing to help, and always looking out for the best interest, not only in Glastonbury, but for all operators and managers within our industry. Mike, we wish you the best in your retirement. It is certainly well-deserved. On the, on the screen there, you're going to see what the, the, our board of directors, you know, our board of directors meets once a month on a Zoom call. Uh, that's made it really efficient, able to, you know, we're able to take care of a lot of business. So all the bad things with COVID, the Zoom calls and the efficiency of, of having these meetings, not having to drive to, uh, to, to, to get together f to do work, to, to move things along is really helpful. Since the spring inaugural event, the board has, has set and approved a budget for fiscal year 24 and has completed all aspects of the merger, including merging funds and following all appropriate nonprofit compliance and tax documents while securing insurance for the entity. We are assisted and supported by the administrative staff at NUIA. I'd like to thank Mary Berry and Janice Moran and the team at NUIA for helping us navigate the merger. It would have been very difficult, if not impossible, without their guidance and assistance. So thank you very much, Mary and Janice. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge, whoops, sorry. I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge everyone on the board of directors and thank them for their hard work and contributions. Please take note and introduce yourself to the board members. These folks you can contact at any time and can raise issues to initiate collaboration. Directors, please stand when I call your name. Vice President Jeff LeMay. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Treasurer Jane Lamort. Is Jane here? Oh. Um, Director Megan Ambrose from UConn. Director Ray Barr from Green Mountain Pipeline. <laughs> Director Norb Church from Point of Woods Water and Sewer. Norb, hey, Norb's right there. Ben Levin from Town and Marlboro. <laughs> Ben's on the uh, small communities along with Norb. They uh, help put this, these, these present presenters together. Uh, Virgil Lloyd, Fuss and O'Neill. I don't think Virgil's here today. Uh, he contributes tremendously to this organization. Larry Murphy, Jacobs. <laughs> Tracy Santoro, Hayes Pump. Tracy's over there in the booth. Sirdar Murr with Fleet. So he's not here today. And uh, Ven Vanessa McPherson from Arcadis. Special thanks to Vanessa McPherson, who's also our Connecticut State Director for New England and Water Environment. Vanessa took over for Bill Norton and didn't miss a beat. She's very involved in the Legislative Committee, but also com contributes to both the Operators Committee and the Ops Challenge Committee. So thank you, Vanessa. From the beginning of the discussions of the merger, it was always envisioned that committees would be the backbone of the new organization. There are too many issues to work on for just a few board, uh, few board members or, or several members to manage. It's very exciting that the newly formed committees have really gotten off to a great start in the first few months of the organization. So I'm going to attempt to give an update to each committee. But I'd like to ask each committee chair to stand and keep me in check to make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, most of these committee members sent me a huge page full of things they've worked on. I was actually quite shocked and had to pare it down a bit. Uh, the first committee, Ops Challenge Committee. This committee is chaired by Ryan Harold and uh, Jason Neininger, and they're at this table over here. Wait. First and foremost, we'd like to recognize the achievements of 
the Opera Connecticut Operations Challenge Team, consisting of Jason Neininger, Paul Burns, Ryan Harold, Nicole LaVoy, and Bradford Vasseur. The team placed 14th overall in 25 teams in Division II down in WEF in New Orleans, with a strong third place finish in the process control event. This is the fourth consecutive year that Connecticut operators have placed in this event, and it's a testament to these operators. The process, event, uh, process event is not a brute force or speed event. Instead, it's the most representative of the operator's wastewater process knowledge, and they pride themselves in doing well in this event. So congrats, guys. Nice job. <laughs> On the committee side, uh, Jason and Ryan are looking for new members. Uh, we really need, this needs to happen organically uh, really from the guys running the treatment plants, getting the word out that this is a huge benefit to the guys that work at the plant. It gives them a lot of energy, a lot of pride, and um, it's, it's a great way to collaborate and learn from other operators. So um, any superintendents uh, or managers of, of treatment plants, um, we really like to get your guys involved in Ops Challenge. They're trying to get to the point where we have more than one team and we can really compete amongst each other. One of the other things they need to work on is a place um, and equipment to practice on. There's two events in particular that are very difficult to practice on. The equipment's fairly expensive. It's not easy, easily accessible. Nuia gets them for a very short time. Uh, we'd like Connecticut had to have their own equipment, have the ability for these guys to uh, to practice on it. It would make a huge difference in, in, in how they compete. Some of these, some of these um, if you go to WEFTEC, some of these um, teams, you can tell they've been practicing many times a week for, for probably months on end. Um, the other part of that is funding this equipment. We're gonna be working to raise funds, probably on two fronts. There'll, there'll probably be some events catered specifically to Ops Challenge. In addition, we'll be looking to secure some of the grant funding that seems to be flowing very freely from the federal government these days in the state. The next committee is the Social Networking Committee that's chaired by Sirdar and Tracy Santoro. Tracy's over there. This, can, this committee will continue to host events, bringing folks together from around, the, from around the industry to share knowledge and most importantly, to have fun. They'll continue working with the, the Poo and Brews alongside New uh, Nuia, which several of you have attended. Uh, they'll continue the signature events such as the, go uh, the Sewer Golf Open and the Ski Classic in the winter. Events we're looking to add is possibly a Hartford Yard Goats game, a Wolfpack game, and uh, looking into adding holiday event or some summer events such as an Operation Appreciation Day, awards dinner, or a fishing trip. <laughs> Operations Committee, chaired by Ted Donahue. Ted's right here in front. Ted's got a ton of energy. He and Vanessa have been working to uh, reignite the uh, previously successful Operators Exchange Program. Operators Exchange provides an opportunity for operators to spend a couple of days in a treatment plant in a different municipality. This allows operators to learn while being exposed to different processes and procedures. The main focus of Ops Committee and 2023 and 2024 will be the development of technical training for grade three and grade, grade four operators, which is much needed. The Operators Committee is working on the next CT WIA event um, with the Training and Expo Committee uh, chaired by Larry Murphy. That event will be the CT WIA's first Manager's Forum. You've heard the Manager's Forum before. It was done by C CWPAA. It will also be held here at the AquaTurf for the first time. It used to be held at the MDC Training Center. Uh, I don't know if you remember, that place was pretty crowded usually and tight, so we're hoping that we can get more people in here. I expect a great attendance for that event. They're working on the agenda. Please uh, you know, check the CTWIA website for more details. Small Communities and Collection Systems Committee, <coughs> excuse me, chaired by Ben Levin and Norm Church. Ben's around here somewhere. There you go. This committee will focus on the issues of importance affecting communities which have collection systems that are not conveyed to another community's treatment facility. 
or have on-site uh, small treatment systems. They are tasked with monitoring and regulating subsurface disposal. The committee will also focus on, on issues affecting communities looking to extend sewer mains into areas of new development or areas of widespread septic system failures. This committee stays connected with the Public Health Subsurface Sewer Sewage Code Advisory Committee. The com committee recently developed a database of small communities and working in an outreach for, with an outreach program to encur encourage membership. Um, this is one of the tasks, both the from CWPAA side, operators were, were worried about losing identity during the merger. From the CAWPCA side, we we're worried about small communities and, and the, the identity they would lose. So. Uh, I think we have both those covered real well with Ben and with Ted uh, working with those two sides. Uh, the Scholarships and Awards Committee, chaired by Virgil Lloyd and Ray Barr, Ray's over there. Um, this will continue uh, basically what CWPAA has started through the years. They do a great, they've done a great job um, raising funds for college scholarships. Um, the application for the scholarships will be available on January 1st, and they'll be due by April 1st. Um, we'll likely announce the winners either at this, a, a spring event that's yet to be determined or the golf tournament. The group is also working on establishing annual awards for both operators and major con contributors to the wastewater in industry here in Connecticut. They're looking to duplicate successful awards programs um, like they have in Rhode Island and will likely evolve into a awards dinner of some sort. Membership, engagement, and community, uh, communications committee is currently looking for a chair. This, uh, this committee is the goal is to ensure the visibility of the organization and to the public in multiple formats. The committee provides strategic direction on overall membership policies, recruitment and retention strategies, as well as advises the uh, CTWIA board on the member experience as it relates to communication and digital strategies. This is where we really need some of the, the consultants here with some of the young folks that are working for them to step up and, and help the committee. This, this, this is involved in like, you know, NUIA, LinkedIn, um, or, uh, you know, app-based notifications and making sure we really have uh, everything covered as far as getting the word out, even, um, you know, educational things, getting down to technical schools. I uh, heard an, op, uh, an interesting idea with the, uh, op, the Ops Challenge group. They were saying, you know, if we had this demonstration equipment, we could take it to technical schools. I think that's a fantastic idea. It's, you know, just one of the, the ideas that's come out of these committees. Government Affairs Committee, chaired by Jeff LeMay. Where's Jeff? There he is. This, com this committee is currently the largest committee. It currently has 16 members and that work together with our Legislative Council, Melissa Biggs, on legislative issues affecting our industry. The group also works with other communities on identifying re regulatory issues affecting WPCAs and offers an avenue, avenue for sharing knowledge and collaboration amongst the communities. Is my wife calling? <laughs> um, this is... This is important. It's not just the legislative stuff. It, you know, this is our opportunity to really break out of the parochial Connecticut way we've been a long time. This is your chance, if you're having an issue, whether it's a plant issue, a management issue, to communicate with other like-minded individuals in other towns and see how their way they're doing business. Sometimes that will just result in communication and bouncing ideas off each other. Sometimes it results in, in, oh, this is a problem. We really should take it to the board and see if we have a strategy on how to commu communicate with DEP, how to communicate with the health department. How, how do we best navigate this? It doesn't always need to get to a legislative level, but this is the group that really kind of filters all that out. Workshop training and expo committee that's chaired by Larry Murphy is sitting right in front of me. This one's pretty simple. It supports all the other committees in putting events like this on. So um, please, we can always use more folks to help us involved in these committees. We are especially looking forward to new faces. So thank you to all of the committees and what you've done over the last several months. It's really been amazing and encouraging. So thank you very much.